couple fun classes maybe in the spring. I teach one called Interface Design in the fall, I meant, and uh, it's all based upon designing interfaces for your cell phone, apps, and things like that. Okay, we were looking up Elvis, right? Elvis? There he is, Elvis Presley. I guess we could do Elvis Costello. You want to do Elvis Costello? Somebody different? If I can find a decent Elvis portrait. Hats are always fun. This one's actually kind of cool. I like this one. Um, you know, so people with sort of things that, that you know, they're doing something maybe other than just a portrait. You know, this is kind of cute. Look at this one. You know, I really didn't know who Elvis Costello was for a while until um, one day I was camping and my friends kept me up all night playing music. Of, I thought it was David Bowie and I came out of the tent, I think it was like, you know, 7 or 6 o'clock in the morning I started yelling at them because they played Elvis Costello all night, kept me awake. I said, turn off that David Bowie. It was Elvis Costello, they told me. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. Uh, this one has a lot of nice contrast to it. This is kind of interesting. So you're looking for something, you know, uh, you know, there's a gesture to it. Eyes are looking in a certain direction. Nice, interesting background. Um, you know, something like this might work. Uh, nose would be hard in this case, but the glasses uh, lend itself to um, cheating a little bit. Um, just that you can put something over top of it and hides kind of part of the face, right? Um, and it would make it easier for you to, to make other objects to put over top of it if you had something like glasses. I've had students do glasses. Uh, doing shiny things are difficult as well, though. Um, so let's cheat. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to do something different. Again, you're going to want to start with a new file. And uh, next week I'll go over, uh, I'll bring my laptop and we'll talk about some of the new features in the ver newer version that we have on this computer. And then usually uh, over the summer they'll upgrade. So next uh, fall we should have the latest version of, of the software as well. Uh, in addition, um, I'm going to do print. And you might want to do something bigger. If you remember, a bigger one might be legal or tabloid. Legal is what? Um, 8.5 by 14, interesting size, or 11 by 14 is always good. Again, you can always put inches here, and I might do uh, this. You can do portrait this way, or you can do it this way if you want. Uh, just because the way uh, this photo is, it's kind of more horizontal than vertical, I might do it that way. Um, just make sure you're doing CMYK, because you're going to be printing it out as well. And, uh, and then I'm going to paste my image. There he is. I can... Shrink it down to fit my artboard if I want. And then uh, again, you can lock it if you want. You can lock it before you start so you don't start moving it around. Next thing you do is give yourself a color swatch if you want. If you remember from last class, I'm going to make a new layer. Um, remember we did blacks and stuff like that. I might call this one base because it'll be my kind of gradient mesh and, and base uh, images. And then I'll even turn it off and draw things over top of it and so on. So I might call it base or whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to, you can make yourself some rectangles and duplicate those if you want uh, to give yourself a color kind of swatch going on here. Um, so, um, and if you want, um, you can always make two of them and let's give our oh remember the tool we, we learned uh, last week the blend tool there we go we can make multiple oh, we don't want it going like that how about we go from this side to this side We're still doing it okay how about we go from this side to this side Oof, definitely not like that uh, how about we go from center to center? Can we do that? There we go. And then uh, put in maybe what, nine. There we go. Evenly spaced uh, uh, 
color swatches. And then, of course, to color them, we have to ungroup them or expand them. And then now we can color them and ungroup them. There we go. Okay, next, uh, to color them, I'm going to select them. Use your eyedropper, select the color, and it goes inside the swatch. Do you see that? Again, select a rectangle, use the color swatch, go to your face, select the color. Do you see that? Again, select a swatch, use the eyedropper, go to the, select the color. I'm kind of randomly, but you might want to put them in kind of some kind of order if you want. Maybe high, you know, light ones to dark ones. kind of randomly. Don't forget some lip color here. There we go. Give it lip color there. Maybe um, chin color. We need some more darks, darks in there. Let's get a dark, 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 dark. There, there we go. Dark color. We have some nice light colors. Um, let's get a color for a shirt. A little blue action there. Nice little bright color there. There we go. Okay, so we got a bunch of flesh tone colors right there. Uh, again, to do the kind of gradient mesh, I'm going to actually draw one big kind of uh, mesh around the entire face here um, by using the pen tool. I, the reason why I'm using a pen tool, I remember last class I went over using the pencil tool, right? Remember we were using the pencil tool technique? The reason why I'm using the pen tool now is so that I put the least amount of dots down. Remember, when you start using the gradient mesh, it actually puts more dots down, right? And so the more that, the less you start with, the better. If you can remember, remember we were doing the fruit? Whoosh. That was a long time ago. So I'm going to try and do this portrait with the least amount of, the least, I'm not going to worry about the chin. We'll, we'll come back to that. I'm going to to go around here. Don't worry, you can overlap pieces. Ah, I made a mistake. That's right, I can delete that one. Okay, so I have a nice base face. That's a word, base face. Um, let me remove this one. I didn't, I had an extra point. Didn't want that one. There we go. Let me fix this just briefly. There we go. Okay, so we have that. Now, I can't really see what's underneath there is the problem, right? You can't really see where to put the gradient meshes and stuff like that. So uh, there's a couple ways, just like we did with the fruit. You can either uh, move this away if you want, put it kind of next to it, and kind of guess where things are. Another way to do that would be to uh, maybe possibly put a transparency on my... Um, a transparency so that I can see underneath it and then I can click right over top of it the problem with that though is you have to go back and turn a transparency off on certain parts so that that that's a little bit more work um, but that's possible um, another way might be to um, duplicate the portrait next to it so that you can see. Kind of put it next to it. So you can get an idea. That's one way. Um, um, option click and drag, just like I would duplicate anything. I had to unlock my layer though to do that. Um, I don't know, the transparency might might be an easier way of doing it, turning down the transparency a little bit. Let me see if I could just see a little bit underneath it is what I'm looking for. Okay. So again, I'm going to do the major kind of flesh tones. Uh, actually, I'm going to move it over. I'm going to move it over here, turn the transparency up. There we go. So I'll put it over here. And so you can see it's kind of darker on this side. It's lighter on this side. Is a very light here. It's kind of dark underneath his eyes here. It's definitely darker um, kind of right down the middle here. So think of the banana maybe. You could have maybe, you know, kind of a line going kind of down the middle there. 
So here we go. I'm going to use the gradient mesh tool, which is this one right here. Uh, again, we have some eye shape here, and we have an eye shape kind of here. But that's kind of in the wrong spot, isn't it? Maybe there. Um, here's a highlight. That, that could be the highlight there. Um, nose here. Chin there. Okay, that's a good start. So once I have my kind of regular points, let me bring these over a little bit closer here. I can then start adding my dots to my gradient mesh. So this is kind of going to be an eye socket area over here, right here, eye socket area. So I can use uh, either, you could use the eyedropper and suck it up there. That's one way of doing it. Or of course you can come over to your swatch and suck it up there. Either way. And then um, this is going to be an eye socket too, isn't it? Yeah, and this would be kind of a cheek. And look, I'm moving them kind of around a little bit. Uh, this is going to be the nose. This will be part of the nose here. This will be the head area here. This will be a highlight for this part over here. So I can use my eyedropper and either suck up here or I can come over here and suck up from there. And then, of course, it's going to be a little darker over here on this side. So I'm going to use my eyedropper here as well. And um, I don't like that tone. How about that? That doesn't look very good. That's better. And then uh, this was going to be what? An eye socket area? And I'm going to put another mesh maybe right here. Why isn't it lot let me put one in there? Hold on, I gotta zoom in. Can't put one on this line. No. There we go. Let me put a, a darker kind of color in there. There we go. And of course, don't forget you can select the endpoints and add some color to those as well. Endpoints. And then uh, this is kind of a cheek area here. So we can give that a nice bright color there. And then kind of down the middle. We can give ourselves some dark areas over here. And all this on this side is kind of dark. And then I might even add really kind of dark dark along the edge here okay it might not look much but it's a it's a kind of a base and it doesn't look very good does it Let's see. That's not too bad. This needs to be a little darker over there. So by turning the opacity down, I can kind of see where the uh, highlights and shadows are. Again, the, the chin is going here. The nose is going to be here. 
Uh, the eyeball can probably use a little bit. No, that's not too bad. Again, all I'm looking for is a base. This is kind of messed up here. This is definitely too, too high up. I'm going to move this over here. Move that down just a little bit there. And then I, I need a little brighter area here. There we go. Move this down. Just don't like the way that fit. Okay, that's a little this is messed up over here. But um again I have a base. So it looks kind of ugly, but it's a start. Okay, and so what are you looking for if you're going to try kind of a gradient mesh way is to give yourself a kind of a base tone. You got half a face there and so on. And then what you can do is you can turn it off and then draw another piece over top, kind of like what we were doing before. So let's say uh, we're going to start with the top up here. He has some nice sort of um, lines in the head there. Um, again, you can use several different ways of doing stuff. Uh, you can use, use yourself a brush and give yourself a brush for the lines. And and then you could select them. You can give them a color. Oof, not a fill color, stroke color, of course. Why is it jumping that? No. Okay. Can I not get a stroke color here? Can I get a stroke color? It won't let me do a stroke color because that's a fill option there. Um, well, whatever. We can double click here, give ourselves a dark color that's not very good but whatever now the key here is that you know we have these horrible bright lines here we can give them thinner make them thinner but uh, oh that's really thin there there we go uh, but remember we're not I, I you know this is not going to look very good like that with such high contrast the key here would be to blur it or use a transparency so whatever objects you put over top of another object blend with the one underneath it. So if you remember from the days when we were doing the uh, fruit, we did a lot of blurring and a lot of blending using either transparency here. Remember the blending modes here? you got blending modes. You also have opacity. Or in this case, remember you have the wonderful blur or Gaussian blur right there. So if we just blur this a little bit. And then let's turn on the face. Oops, I actually drew the lines underneath it, didn't I? Where did I draw those lines? They're under there. Oh, I drew them down here, didn't I? Evil. I guess I should have made a new layer. So keep in mind your location. There we go. So again, you can see uh, I could probably even blend them more, but you get the idea. Um, blending things just like we did with the fruit. Um, okay, so. Um, Eyebrows are very easy to do if you want to cheat and just use a brush. Um, I've had students use the paintbrush very effectively um, by using a, where's that, that, the brush that's kind of, this one. So um, let me start over here. So again, you have kind of a, um, you know, I think person who uses the these this brush very effectively was, of course, Donna. 
Uh, she's the one who did the, the one over there, the very far one over there. Most of those kind of lines are kind of rough lines because they are using a brush. So if you look over there at uh, Jessica Rabbit, you will see m most of the facial features, like a eyebrow or something, is nothing but a, a, a kind of a rough brush. So um, you can make your own brush if you want as well. Um, And we'll do that with the hair, of course. Or, of course, there's this one right here. Or you can go and 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 open up a, the brush pop-up window. There's a whole brush library here. Um, what are the ones we were using? The uh, art brushes, right? Artistic brushes. That's it. Charcoal ones. So you have things like like this it's kind of rough okay so you can use something like that pick yourself a nice kind of color here and then um, use your paintbrush and kind of just give it one of those can't really see it because it's underneath it but give it like that and then maybe get a darker color and do the same thing like that doesn't really look like much, but if we put the... Oh, geez, again, I keep putting it in the wrong layer. I got to get my layers organized here. You'll see that you can simply use a brush kind of rough like that. Uh, Donna does that very effectively. Me, of course, I can't do that. But if you look at the Jessica Rabbit one over there, she does that very, um, very good. And uh, she uses that. I mean, you can literally put brushes in certain areas to give yourself some detail. And then take that brush and really then to blend it with the background to give your face some texture. Just give yourself an opacity, a very light opacity there. And if you zoom in, I know you can't really see it, but if we zoom in, you know, nobody's face is just perfectly smooth, especially if you're using a gradient mesh. Just by putting some brushy texture thing and then changing the opacity so that it's there will give you some detail. Uh, you know, he has all kinds of different dots and things, you know, and so you can actually, you know, just draw a bunch of brushes to give yourself some. Why am I drawing? Uh, which layer am I on? Why does it keep jumping to that layer? Evil. Evil. Again, putting some. And then don't forget there is some blending modes you can do. They give you different contrast as well. Okay, so don't be afraid of doing that. Um, I think he needs a little bit more brush here. Okay, so we got some lines, some wrinkles. Um, again, doing uh, the face is going to be hard, trying to get whatever you do to blend with a gradient mesh that's underneath it. Uh, you can kind of use the same techniques that we used last class when we were using the pencil tool. So you have a pencil tool like this where you can give yourself some shapes and of course give it a fill and if you look at it it's gonna look like it's just slapped on there right if we turn on the background it looks like it's just slapped on there so how do I get this object to to work with the one that's underneath it well there's some ways of doing it and I don't know why my pencil is so precise did we change oh, why is it so accurate Jean's been messing with my settings isn't she she was messing with my settings. Remember we were going smooth, right? Remember we were doing smooth last class? So, there we go, nice and smooth, smooth. So how can we get the object to look like it blends with the one underneath it? 
Of course, the blur is the easiest way of going about it. But one way uh, also to do it is to actually add some transparency to your object. In this case, if you remember when we were doing the um, when we were doing the poster, we had the moonshine, right? Right. So you can do the same thing. You can have yourself a gradient, um, a gradient. Oh, why is it doing stroke? Gradient, no stroke. Give yourself a gradient, and then in the gradient window, in the gradient pop-up window, remember you have transparency there as well. So you can um, choose a color. All right. And I can adjust my gradient. I don't like the colors I am using here. I, I should have made a color swatch, so I had them in here. I need this color right here, and I can't suck it up with the eyedropper. It's just gonna suck the whole color up. Um, but just keep in mind, you can actually go and uh, let me change the uh, direction of this. So you can change the direction of your gradient like that. And then um, you can go, and what I'm trying to say is you could take the color and adjust the opacity. And if you do that, you can see it starts blending with the one underneath it. And so if I turn on my base color, I can start to get objects. struggling here. I can start to get objects that kind of blend with the one underneath it. See how this one kind of blends a little bit if you look at it? Again, don't, you know, you can have things kind of overlapping and you see there's like a contrast of colors here from this color to this color to this color all kind of blending together because there's a transparency on this and that's sort of one way if you're putting objects in and of course you can blur these a little bit and then blur them. Don't blur things too much. And if you blur them a little bit, you can really start getting things to blend together. And so that's the bottom of the eye. And you can see I got the part under his eye. is It's not too bad right there. That looks pretty good. And uh, I would go and let's finish the eye real quick here. So the bottom of the eye isn't too bad. Again, I'm just using the pencil tool and then blending them. We'll give ourselves something like that. Maybe give ourselves something like this. And um, we got a really bright area over here. And uh, let's change the colors of that um, to a lighter color. Don't like that color to be warm. Something like that. Okay, that's better. And then, um, I don't know, I have a kind of a bright area here. And then see what it looks like with the gradient underneath it. And it's, it's struggling. This, this needs to be dark here. My gradient mesh needs to be adjusted. needs to be moved over a little bit, I think. And this needs to be darker. There we go. That's better. And of course you can bl blur those things. And then uh, we can put ourselves an eye in there. Again, just using the pencil tool. I did, where did that go? That didn't go anywhere. Let's give that a, a light color. And he has a, an 
eye color. And then, of course, don't forget about a glint in the eye. You can give yourself a glint. Nice white with a blur to it. And of course, you need a little black area for the um, boy. He's looking scary, isn't it? Well, I think the best thing about this one is that we can throw the glasses over top of it, and it would look a lot better, right? So if I go and I, I can make, I'm going to make a new layer. And we could give ourselves some glasses, nice simple glasses. Really? There you go. Now he's got sunglasses on. Now we don't have to look, worry about the eyes, right? Look up shiny. I don't. I don't see no eyes. Don't have to worry about that. Okay. Let's see. And of course, um, we can then use our. Sloppy. You basically just cut a hole in the same one. I'm going to use my pathfinder and I'm going to cut a hole in this fabulous uh, sunglasses here. There we go. So we got we got our objects all here. And then let's use our Pathfinder. And we'll minus front. If I can find minus front, which one is this one? There we go. We cut a hole in there. And let's make it black. There we go. Elvis Costello glasses. There we go. Now it's looking a little easier, right? Uh, for the highlight of the glasses, I would cheat a little bit. Cheating's good. Uh, uh, cheating by uh, probably adding some effects uh, to give the glasses some kind of uh, um, look to them so that they have some, um, you know, they're, it's a solid black right now. doesn't look like plastic at all. It looks just like a solid black thing. If you want something to look kind of like plastic, you can put like an inner glow inside there. There is effects for things like that. Under stylize, you have these things called inner glow and things like that, inner glow. And you, you can give yourself an inner glow. You hit preview. Oops, that's a little bit much. Um, if I can make it smaller. No, they don't make it easy, do they? Uh, oh, that's, no, it doesn't let you do more than that. I 
it's not very easy. How about center? No, that's not good. Edge? No, that's not good either. Okay, don't do inner glow. It needs something though. So how can we make it a little bit different? Um, I guess we could duplicate it and then give the one underneath it a certain color to it. Maybe a gray. There we go. Something like that. Something, just something to give it, so it's not just so solid. I don't know, something like that. Of course, the eye probably needs a black area in there. But, um, I mean, the colors are off. You know, it's really hard to get the colors to match because, you know, these, these shapes I was putting here are totally different color than the ones underneath it, so they probably need to match the colors better uh, and so on. Um, again, we could even do a nose part. For the nose, I'd probably do a gradient mesh as well. So I would probably give myself a nice kind of shape here and we need to, I, I, these colors are all messed up. Fuck. I'm struggling with color here. I had some color swatches at one point, didn't I? There we go. That's better. Uh, another way is, is not even to use a gradient mesh. Just give yourself some shapes. How about that? There's a shape here. Let's make that light. Um, it's kind of a shape around here. Make that a different color. And then maybe um, hide that. And of course, shape here. And that's, of course, a very dark one. And then um, another shape kind of along the edge here. Whoosh, that's way too dark there. And then, of course, kind of following uh, the technique from last class, outlining this a little bit maybe with a the color there. And same with over here. Giving that a color. And then let's put our base on here. Whoosh. Of course, this is the wrong color for sure here. That's a little this needs some color over here, doesn't it? Then, of course, you could even just blur it a, just a, a slight bit so the objects work well together. It's a little bit better, a little blur. Just 
stuff keeps growing more too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it takes a long time, a long time, a long time. Uh, the, it's much harder than the last class technique, but um, you can get more realistic looking things. Um, and so use the hybrid technique. I don't know. I mean, you can mix a little bit. Like you said, start with the gradient mesh and then add a little bit of the contrast one. Uh -huh. Don't know. Yes? I was wondering how abstract you can go or if it's recommended to stay more realistic with it. Oh, I know. Um, we saw all kinds of different ones last class that were pretty, like, the triangle. Yeah. 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 I don't know. They're on my laptop. I don't have those ones here. Uh, but it should look like a portrait of some kind. This, this one. Uh, yeah. No. Is it abstract? Or it like yeah. this is okay. That's, that's what I meant. Then I also saw one that was um, Marilyn Monroe that was all circles for all the different details of the face. Something like that would be kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, um, normal ones like this, but of course, you know, Donna did Jessica Rabbit, and she redid this a couple years ago into a new one with more stuff in it. And then of course, don't forget the background, maybe some kind of background and make sure it works with the people. The hair here is very nice. Okay, you ready to challenge for hair? We can do hair today if you want. Do the great hair ball. Okay. <laughs> hair is super hard. Well, please don't say that. And we still got to cover lips, and I still got to show you how to make great eyes. We might have to wait for another class for some of that. But let's let's challenge ourselves with a little hair today. Probably the best hair on the planet is the one that's on the internet. Okay, so if you want good hair, go to the internet, type in Illustrator Hair Brush, and then go to this one right here. This one, you got to find the Illustrator file though, not this graphic. There's a hairbrush. Look at this one. Oh, look at those ones. They may be good for eyebrows. This one. Ah, oh, I just want that one. Where did it go? Where am I at? I'm on like Deviant Art. I want this one. Is this is this gonna be a virus? What do you think? Should we download? This is no good. I wouldn't download that. Okay, there's gotta be a better place to find that brush. Yeah, I don't know. The, the, this brush, I, I have it somewhere. Is this the website I was already on? Is this it? Damn.
might have it on the server already. Is there a way I can search? No. Can I can I search? Okay, I found it. It's actually on uh, my server. I know we don't use a server in this class, but it's the same kind of server Jean uses. In, if you're in her classes, and. Uh, it's it's underneath uh, go connect to server big mac pro and my login is j r a s c o v and my password is bill gates bill gates and there is a hairbrush on there so if you can find it it's called hair right here so if you find something on the internet and you want to use it as a brush you can import it into illustrator Okay, so if you find a brush online or you find texture online, it depends on where you put it in Illustrator. So since I want to use this hair, on, and I, we'll make our own hair as well, but we'll, let's use this one first. To use this hair that I downloaded, it again, it is a Illustrator file, and if you open it up, you'll see it's, a, it's an Illustrator file. These are just, just Illustrator file. That's all it is. It's an AI. To use that, inside here I can load it in as a brush by going under window brushes and in the brushes window I can say open brush other library right there so by going open brush other library I can then go to that file that I have hair.ai and I can say open and it'll bring them in as a brush. So you see all four of those files are already defined as a brush because they were defined as a brush ahead of time. I'll show you how to define your own brush as well. Okay, but the reason why they came in like this as a brush is somebody, whoever made this file, has defined it as a brush ahead of time. Okay, and we'll make our own. But this brush is great. Again, you can use the paintbrush and you can choose the one. I love the blonde one, this one right here. Really nice. And um, how it works is it follows the stroke so if you draw with a brush, it'll follow it. So the longer you draw, the longer the hair will be. The shorter you draw, the shorter the hair will be. It's blurring because I have an effect of blurring is, is applying it. That's why it looks like it's blurring because it, it, it's assuming I'm still blurring from my previous uh, brush. That's why it's blurring it, But which actually might not be too bad. Do you see that? It is blurring it. But if you don't want it blurred, um, you need to turn the Gaussian blur off. Uh, how do I do that? Oh, let's see. How do I turn the Gaussian blur off? How do I turn it off? Is it blurring it? It is blurring it for some reason. It shouldn't be like that. Why are you blurring me? It shouldn't blur it, and it also has some kind of opacity attached to it as well, which is not normal. It, it's kind of taking some, oh, maybe because I did it to this whole layer. Let me make a new layer. I think I did it to that entire layer. Let me make a new layer. Let's call it hair. And then let me try. There we go. Okay, now it's not blurring it. I think because that entire layer that I had. So uh, as you can see, it gives you this kind of brushy kind of hair look to it. And since it's called an art brush, the longer you draw it, the longer the hair will be. So if you just keep building it up on top and on top and on top, you can get yourself some nice hair. Okay. So it's a short or long. You can change the size as well. If you want smaller hair, you can go smaller. It depends on the stroke size. 
to make your own hair, you kind of just use, I'm going to use the pencil tool. You can draw some lines. Let's turn off, um, keep selected. And then, so let me zoom in here. So to make your own hair, if you look at this hair, if we just pull it out, you'll notice all it is is a bunch of lines. See that? That's all it is is a bunch of lines, different colored lines. That's all it is. So, um, you know, to make your own hair, you can make your own kind of lines. Why is it not drawing my lines now? Oh, it is drawing lines, but they're not showing up. There's no color. There we go. So, again, you can make your own lines. I'm drawing squiggly lines. Boy, it's going to be blonde there. There's a big golden hair here. Golden hair. And so. So keep building, keep building, keep building, keep building. And get some contrast in there. A little contrast goes a long way. Okay, whatever. So you can draw yourself a nice kind of stroke like that. You can change the size of it so that they're all a little smaller. This is pretty thick. How can I change the size? There we go. There we go. Kind of thin. Then to make it into a brush that you can paint with, you need to make it into an art brush. To make it into an art brush, we select all our objects that are there. And we go into the uh, brushes window, or we can just say um, new brush here at the very bottom of the brush pop-up window. There's like a little folder right here. So you see it says new brush. So in the brushes window, you can say new brush or new brush. So when you say new brush, it's going to ask you what kind of brush you want. Uh, calligraphy brush, scatter brush, art brush, bristle brush, print pattern brush. And um, you can then say the one that follows the stroke for the length of when you're drawing is called the art brush and if you choose the art brush you can hit OK and it'll tell you what direction do you want so in this case we want it to follow the entire length of the uh, brush here like this so the default at least in this case is OK and I can hit OK and it makes this brush Ooh, that's pretty ugly looking brush here and so if you deselect your thing and use your brush tool and choose it, you can draw with your own brush. Oof, I think I kind of messed it up, didn't I? Look at that. I did mess it up. Why is it so scattered? What did I do wrong? Select it. Let's make it a brush, art brush. Oh, that's a calligraphy brush. When I tried, uh, it says Because you have already have a brush inside of a brush, maybe? Or maybe there's a gradient or a pattern? Yeah, there's a gradient. Can't do a gradient. No. I'm not sure why it's not letting me do this properly here. Why is it? I mean, it's, it's, it's like spreading it out for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe because I made it too thin? Why is it doing that? It seems to be going the wrong way. Let me try again. Let me change the direction. Really, that that's not the way it should go. That direction. Would you would you think it would go that way? It doesn't make any sense. No. Maybe your brush is too big. Yeah, maybe, or maybe the size is too, it's just weird. I don't know why it's doing this to me. But that's how I've made brushes before. I don't know. I don't know why it's doing it. I, 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 I've made brushes. That's what this brush is. Look, it's just a bunch of little lines. I don't know. Let me try and make another one.
the brush save just for this file or for all of Illustrator? Um, just for this file, but you can um, save it as a separate um, file and use it like that hair.illustrator is a separate file. I don't know, let me try this again. So let's try, um, what did I say? Art brush, right? Art brush. That looks good. Maybe you need to draw it horizontally. I have no idea. Let's see. Yeah, that worked. Draw horizontally instead of vertically. How about that? Draw horizontally. <laughs> Here we go. Let's give Elvis Costello some cool hair there. He can be a Rasta man here. He's the dreadlocks. There he is. Really? Okay, so let's turn off our, our photos and let's get rid of these ones over here. There we go. There we go. It's looking like Elvis Costello already. Okay, what do you think? I don't know. I think the last the last class technique was a little easier, I'm sure. Um, but you might want to try. It's a little bit of a challenge with the gradient mesh, getting things to blur together and blend together. Um, but you can mix and match and maybe try different techniques. Uh, you just need to try. I'll, I'll go over more eye stuff and more lip stuff and ears next class. Eyes, ears, and nose and mouth. But um, Could you give us a quick thing on how to import a brush again if you download uh, to download, if you want to import your brush uh, uh, in the brushes window, yeah. there is a pop-up menu here. And in the pop-up menu, there's an open brush library, and then say other library. And then you can open up a file. And it's usually just an Illustrator file. Okay? Yeah. Okay.